Hi, this is Nick Davis, and this is a tutorial showing how to create a gel or glass Photoshop button effect, like the one you see here. Uh, this is probably one of the more commonly requested Photoshop tutorials, so my one uh, is created using just shape layers and layer effects, or layer styles. You can actually blow this up to any size in Photoshop because it's all created using vector graphics and it won't lose quality, but we're going to create a, a low resolution one for now. So uh, let's get going with this. First of all, start off with a document 550 pixels square and fill it with black. First, we're going to create a shape layer using the ellipse tool. And uh, to do this, hold down the shift key and create a perfect circle, leaving a bit of space around the edge there. The shift key, of course, constrains the proportions so that it creates a perfect circle. If you don't hold it down, then you'll create um, an ellipse like this. Let's just undo that. So now select the Move tool, select All, and then in the Options palette, you want to click the Align Horizontal Centers and Align Vertical Centers to center the circle within the canvas. So there we go. Now deselect by going Select, Deselect. And now we're going to duplicate this layer twice. We need three shape layers to create this effect. Uh, to do that, just drag the layer down to the Create New Layer icon down here. One, two, and hide the top two layers. Select the bottom layer, and now we're going to get going. The first thing we're going to do is create this metal base that the uh, button sits in. So to do that, we're going to start with the lower layer selected. Click on the Add a Layer Style button down here, and select Stroke. The settings for the stroke are going to be 30 size, position is going to be center, um, the fill type is going to be gradient, and the angle minus 90 degrees. Click on the gradient, and uh, we're going to edit this here. I saved uh, some gradients earlier on, and what you want to do is, is replicate this as closely as possible. If you want to add points, just click here to add and drag them off to delete. So here we've got a grey, a white, a grey, a black, and then a blue over here. Click OK. And you'll end up with something that looks like this. Next we're going to select Bevel and Emboss. The style here will be Outer Bevel. The depth 190%. Direction up. Size 6 pixels. Uncheck Use Global Light and change the angle to 90 degrees and the altitude to 15 degrees. Then we're going to click on this Gloss Contour button here and we're going to select Ring. And if you hold the cursor over these, they, they will name them and we're going to want Ring. The highlight opacity uh, should be 100% and the shadow mode 100% as well. And then we're going to click OK. So now you can see this uh, nicely beveled base. Uh, this inner part here will be hidden uh, once we get underway with the glass. Now we're going to create the glass button and uh, to do this we're going to select the middle shape layer here and make it visible. Select the layer styles button and stroke. Uh, the stroke settings here um, I'm going to make uh, size 2, position inside, blend mode, screen, opacity 90%, fill type gradient again and minus 90 degree angle. Again here I'm going to click on this gradient and load one that I created earlier. Again try and replicate this as closely as possible. We've got a, a grey, a white, a purpley blue and another slate blue over here. And click OK. That'll give us a, a very subtle reflected edge around the edge of the glass. OK, next we're going to add some reflected shadow down here at the base. Remember it's in a black environment. So you would get some dark reflections, not just light. So we're going to click on Gradient Overlay, and Multiply, 50% uh, Opacity, and we're going to select a standard black to white gradient. And this is what you'll end up with. Next, we're going to select Inner Glow to create some reflected light, Inner Glow. And these are the settings. Screen for Blend Mode, Opacity 75%, Size 60 pixels, and we're going to select a Foreground to Transparent gradient with a, a blue over here and Transparent. So this is where we are now. Uh, finally, we're going to create a bit of inner glow to highlight the shadow down here. So to do that, select Inner Shadow, Screen, 
75% opacity, click off use global light and enter minus 90 degrees here. Distance will be 30 pixels, size 100 and the contour will be an inverted cone. Just hover the cursor over these and you'll see the names. Cone inverted is the one we want for this. And finally we're going to select a blue here for the colour and click OK. And we've got a, a bit of a, an inner glow there, a very mild one. Finally, we're going to make the reflection that appears here on the top of the button. To do that, select the top layer and make it visible. With the Move tool selected, we're going to drag a guide down and snap it to the top of that circle and make sure that under the View menu, Snap is selected and Snap to Guides, Layers, Document Bounds are on. Now that we've done that, go to Edit, Free Transform Path and hold down the Shift and Alt keys to constrain it to proportions and to keep it in the centre of the canvas and scale it down to about 60%. Then press Shift and drag it up to snap to that guide that we just created. When you're happy, press Return. The layer blend mode here should be screen and we're just going to apply one style, which is gradient overlay. And here we're going to make the blend mode screen and we're going to have a blue to white gradient. Again, I created this earlier, standard linear gradient, and going to just take the opacity down to 80%, and we're done with that. Now uh, what we have to do is just blend that reflection into the button. To do that, we're going to click on Add Layer Mask, and a layer mask will appear. And uh, you'll see the foreground background colors revert to white black. Click the Gradient tool, and in the Options palette, make sure you have a linear gradient selected and uh, that reverse is unchecked. Then position the cursor near the top of the circle, just inside it. Click and Shift to constrain it to the y-axis and drag it down and release. And in the layer, you'll see the mask has taken on the attributes that you've just given it. And uh, there you have it, a nice glassy looking button. Now there is one final optional step that you can take to give it a bit more depth. And that is select the middle shape layer and double click the little layer styles icon there to bring up the dialog box. What we're going to do is select satin. But we're going to make the blend mode multiply color black Opacity 100%, angle minus 90, distance 180 pixels, size 250 pixels. The contour is going to be half round. Click on this and find the half round one. There it is. And uncheck invert. And what you'll see here is a much deeper black. If you click off the satin, it's giving it a whole new depth. So I'm going to keep that, click OK, and there is your button.